30 seconds. Um, just really, I just had to hit him. Should have got to touch him or something. Um, I knew I was down in the fight, and I just knew um, that I really just had to touch him. And, you know, I wanted to come out fast, but you never know once you step inside the octagon. It's everything really out the window after that. You know? So it is what it is. What your eye? What happened to your eye? I don't know if he poked me or uh, uh, knuckle, uh, glove, or what, but the shit hurt it. And my eyes were blurry. It made both my eyes blurry at the same time, really. Did you have any issues with your back? No, I didn't have any issues. Um, like after the fight, my back started hurting a little bit, but there was no issues. Oh, I was right. just tired of the shit. The first round, I was tired. I know you mentioned you'd be looking at possible surgery if your back was hurting in this one. Does that mean you're going to stick with the current therapy that you're using for your back? And you yeah, won't be everything's at so far so good. So far so good. So we'll see how it goes day by day. That was an entertaining fight. I know your last fight wasn't uh, what you thought it would be. Um, just how relieved are you to, to get a performance like this and also get another finish? Um, I really had an orgasm. That's one reason why I took my shorts off. <laughs> so it, it felt good. You know. <laughs> True story. Did anyone did anyone from the UFC speak to you afterwards about taking your shorts off? No, one of the little short fat guys came and told me I got to put my shorts back on. Uh, backstage though? No, in the cage. Yeah. That was one of the most entertaining post fight interviews ever. <laughs> Tell us a bit more about your interaction with Donald Trump. Oh, I never met the man. I don't want to meet him. I was just bullshitting. Okay. No. <laughs> Did anyone from the UFC press speak to you after the fight about possibly Uh, title. Yeah, they did, but I don't. I really don't think I'm ready for a title shot because that's five rounds. Shit, I can barely go three rounds. Um, you know, I used to train 30 minutes um, a day whenever I train. Um, this camp, I train for an hour, and I guess I gotta like hype up my my, my hours of a little bit more in training. Your opponent told you in between the second and third round that you were down two rounds. Um, that's that's how I go into every fight, kill or be killed, win, lose, or draw. I'm still giving my all. No matter how tired I get, I can still punch as hard in the first round than in the third round or whatever. You know, Curtis I just Blades got the most pretty, heart. Curtis Blades was pretty vocal on uh, Twitter during the fight. He basically uh, put out a few tweets, and then one of them said that he believes he can beat you in one takedown, and that you got starched by Mark Hunt and he'll do much worse to you. What, what do you think of those kind of comments from Curtis Blades? Curtis Blades just playing fish right now. He want me to um, say something back to him and say, okay, let me let me fight Curtis Blades next, which he's behind me instead of me saying, okay, I want the title shot. You know, that's all he's doing, just trying to play, you know, he don't want me to fight for the title next. He want to get a shot at me before anyone else does. That's all it is, but fuck Curtis Blades. <laughs> <laughs> Retweet that back to him for me, since you're you on your phone. You, said, you spent some time on the ground right after. Uh, what was going through your mind when you were on that cool ground afterwards? Oh, man, that shit rough. It, um, the ground, the turf or whatever that shit, it felt like turf. That's all I was thinking about. I was like, man, this shit uncomfortable. Does this win mean more to you than the Mark Hunt win, just with the, the card this was on and the fact you were able to come back with you know, 11 Mark seconds? Mark Hunt win. Yeah, or sorry, Mark. No, the loss. Never mind. I uh, just, just, it's, 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 where are you from? It, it's, 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 <laughs> as far as, as far as your, um, as far as career victories go, where does this rank? I guess this is number one now. It was Travis Brown. Now is this one because Travis Brown fight is just about the same way, like one dimensional. Then out of nowhere, um, God said, "Hey, get your black ass going. We gotta go." And that's what happened. I came in with the knockout. Well, Podcast. You gonna be there? You look like a stoner anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, shit. Whenever, whenever I can, really. You said you need two weeks. Why the two weeks before you can smoke out with him? Um, just in case you decide to try to come back and test me next week. That's all. Is that the biggest incentive for you to jump on this show to discuss with Joe Rogan? Yeah, shit. Sure. Everybody else doing it. You don't, you wouldn't, if Joe Rogan asked you today, if you come on my show and smoke weed, you don't want to smoke weed, Joe? Joe? Yeah. <laughs>
Derek, you're you're actually good after the, the post fight drug test. You can start as soon as soon as that's over. You're good. You show sure? positive. What's your name? Mark Raymondi, <laughs> MMAfighting.com. Okay. That's that's I'm, when the I'm in competition window know. ends, okay. and then you All can. Right. Because it's not, it's not illegal outside competition. After a fight like that, I need more than probably weed right about now. <laughs> Shit. Derek, uh, he knocked his mouthpiece out, and he tried to give it to you because he thought it was your mouthpiece. What was going through your mind when that happened? <laughs> I wanted him to think, okay, yeah, he could think, let um, Herb D to come check me so I could get some more time to, um, to breathe. So I, already, I seen what he was doing, and I was like, okay. I didn't want to open my mouth quick enough so um, her being could so, see that I had my mouthpiece in my mouth. So I wanted some more time to um, catch my breath. Hey there, after the fight, you held up a heart symbol. You know, that's one of your main attributes, you know, his heart. How much do you think that plays into your... It's everything. Ability? Everything. You know, um, a lot of these guys have been training for years and stuff like that. You know, um, I'm really not a mixed martial artist. I'm really a brawler and stuff like that. And I believe like the heart will take you farther than any kind of skill level or whatever, you know. I, that's what, what I always believe. So you think you, you would attribute that to most of your wins? Yes, yeah, well, to everything I do, you know. Even my family, my family come first. You know, I don't really don't care about myself, I care about my family. So everything, my life and everything is really have to do with my heart. Derek, yesterday at, at Ceremonial Wayans, you got into a little bit of a pushy shove. Why are you shoving. talking to me? Because I'm, like I'm small, <laughs> so I can't really. Uh, you knocked off his, his hat. Anything personal with you guys? Or you, what, what prompted that? Oh, not at all. You know, I guess it was the, um, the energy of the building. The, the energy was crazy. You know, I didn't expect for them to really cheer for me as much as they did, especially from my last fight, how much booze I heard. I really didn't expect for them to cheer me. Whenever they did, they just gave me the energy to, um, to really try to show them that USA is here. How are you celebrating tonight? Oh, uh, I'm not celebrating at all. Shit, I'm tired. I'll probably take a shower and lay my black ass down. No uh, wine and cheese? Hmm? No wine and cheese? No, that's next week. Yeah, uh, Eddie Murphy party, huh? <laughs> After you got uh, poked in the eye, you were kind of looking off. Did you think they were going to call it? Were you just tired? Uh, when you were kind of taking that time right there? Oh, uh, I, I thought, like, her being seen him poke me in my eye, I thought he was going to say something. Damn, that's my boy, man. What did the coach say anything to you afterwards? I know you probably gave him a little bit of a heart attack. Waiting yeah, that's so what he said. He said, I'm going to wind up killing him from cardiac arrest. Did you have the confidence? Did you know? Were you playing possum any going into the third? I mean, to wait to that very last moment, did you always have the confidence that you were still going to get it no matter what, even though that clock was ticking, ticking down and coaches calling out the time. Did you still have the confidence to believe that you were still going to finish the fight? I believe I did. You know, um, the last couple of fights, since besides the last one, what, with the Tabor fight and um, the Travis Brown fight, you know, I usually, whenever I'm down in the scorecards, I usually come come alive in the third, uh, the, the last round. Or what. According to Twitter, you overcame the greatest statistical disadvantage uh, in, I think, uh, either heavyweight or, or like a fight in general. Like you were down 82 strikes and you overcame it. Do you like winning fights this way? I just like winning fights. I don't care how, how ugly it is, how pretty it is. I just like winning. I know in the, in the past you've always kind of been down on yourself because of performances, but being able to bring it back so close to the end and get a, a devastating finish, is that something that you take into yourself to feel better about how, where you are overall? As a fighter? Yeah, I believe so. Um, before the fight, I dislocated my, my finger. We was warming up, and I really can't make a fist. And so just by me knowing that I finished a guy like that would not even be able to make a fist it just gave me more confidence. Uh, Twitter was very excited about your walkout music. Was, was there any particular significance to using that song? You know, I'm from Houston, so you know we gotta represent everywhere we go because we underestimate. We the underdogs, they underestimate us and everything. And shout out to the, um, the Houston Astros and the Houston Rockets, man. We're doing it this year. UGK or Scarface? That's a tough one. Probably Scarface since you the OG. They really old school, so both of them really. Like we were saying yesterday, um, Devin and Dude, too. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> that definitely needs to get more recognition. Yeah. Yeah, he's been in the game for a long time. Zero. Yeah, zero too. You know, the tray. All yeah. of them. <laughs> so if they just have y'all out here hanging out, they couldn't get y'all credentials inside? Yeah. <laughs> can you hook us up? <laughs> y'all can come with me. We can go, we can go to the green ones. Plus ones? <laughs>